Hello guys, welcome back to the Yay Star Technical Channel. Today we'll talk about communication methods of P series APIs. Also talk about the main features. Talk about how to use Yay Star APIs with Postman. And I use my P560 as a demo environment. Okay, so first topic, communication methods. In this official document, you see there are API request and API event. We first start with API request. The workflow of the API request is shown as this diagram. Under this diagram, it says, for the first request, the application needs to send credentials to request for an access token. The PBX verifies the credentials and returns an access token. Credentials means that the client ID and client secret provide by your PBX. And in this page, you can also add which extension, which chunk you allow third party to monitor and control. Okay, now we already have the credentials. Next step is using this credential to request an access token. Go to this page. Here you can see what a standard request looks like. Now we open the postman, add a request, switch the method to post, enter the credentials in JSON and click send. You will receive a new access token and refresh token. Access token will expire after 30 minutes. You can send this request again to get a new access token, or you can use the refresh token to get a new access token like this. Now, second topic about the main features of APIs. We will still explain these features with Postman. The first feature is you can query the PBX parameters. Your request should look like this. Start a new request in Postman. Remember to use get while not post in this request and use the access token you get from the last request. Then you can see the result. The second feature is you can configure PBX features. You can see here is a great example from official document. To show you how to add an extension, at this moment there isn't any extension named Terror Smith on my P560. So we copy the request body, create a new request in Postman, fill in the URL and paste the request body here and send. Oops, we don't see success here. We see an error code 10001. That means we use the wrong request method. Look, in the official guide, it uses post, but we use get. Now change the method and send it again. Now you can see Terrorist Myth is already created. The third feature is you can do some call controls. Like here, I would like to make a call via API. I plan to make a call to Terrorist Miss from Chris. Okay, so it is just an internal call. The request body is really simple like this. And I guess I should get another SAS token since it is 30 minutes past. Then follow the guide and send out the request. You see the linker's web client has sent me the message. That means this call has been made. The last feature you can use is to monitor events on the PBX with Postman WebSocket. To use this feature, there are actually three steps. First, you need to establish a WebSocket connection. Still the same, get a new access token. Click New, choose WebSocket Request. Enter the URL and click Connect. As you see, the connection is established. And under API events, there are lots of events you can subscribe to. Here we try to subscribe to call status change. The topic code is 30011. Uh, enter the code in Postman and click set, success. We try to make an internal call on our PBX. Back to Postman, some messages are pushed to Postman as you can see, that is what we want. And it's easy to find that after in an interval of 16 seconds, which is one minute, the WebSocket disconnect. That means we need to send heartbeat to active the connection again, like this. Just simply type in heartbeat, and you will receive a heartbeat response. 
Okay, that's what we have in today's video. I think it will be a super useful guide for who wants to connect a third-party software to our PBX. See you next time.